it shows, I mean, it kind of works for the oceans. I just cannot scroll to the right location right now, but pr trust me and work. Uh, first of all, I'll go very briefly into the idea. Just assume this, uh, you see a city here and not a chunk of ocean in the middle of nowhere. Um, if anyone knows open map tiles, I've already mentioned it in my previous talk, but essentially there's this really cool new development in the open map tiles that I'm spearheading, ability to generate tiles, vector tiles directly on Postgres. So you bypass Mapnik and all the other in-between components and you just say, ask Postgres in a query, for this ZXY, just give me the vector tile and it returns a binary blob that you can store somewhere or just give it directly to the user and you're done. Which means it also scales quite nicely because you just add another uh, read-only slave, Postgres slave, and again, you're done. Because the more you add, then you load balance between them. That's it. You just need a one tiny little uh, service that kind of queries all the different Postgreses to generate these tiles and store them away. Uh, most of the work has actually already been done and Elastic right now is working where I'm work. Uh, we're working on getting that whole platform configured for everyone. So hopefully we'll open source it soon enough. But even if we don't open source some of the internal con configurations for Kubernetes, um, the actual uh, pieces to generate the tiles directly from Postgres are done. But that's not my only talk. <laughs> How am, I, how am I doing on time? Yeah, uh -huh. All right, quick fixes. There's a big red uh, warning at the top that says do not do it until you, uh, unless you actually know what you're doing, which is kind of one of those things, well, you don't understand what you're doing until you start doing it, but that's a different issue. Anyway, in the service called Sawfox, you're able to run really advanced queries against all of OpenStreetMap data, as well as the metadata, as well as federated out to Wikidata and other things. Uh, I'll show you a very simple query, uh, something I, again, oh, sorry, uh, something I already shown uh, to, uh, at, the, uh, at my other presentation, just so not to get into too complicated and internet dependent issues. Um, essentially this query, uh, where I'm at looking for all the, places in OSM data which have max speed set forward and backwards and regular max speed to be the same value. I mean, because it doesn't really make sense you, to have all these different tags when you can just have one that says the maximum speed on this road is 45 miles an hour and instead of repeating it for the forward, for the backward. Uh, so this query looks for that. It says, okay, find me objects that have forward and backward to be the same value, the same variable, but that variable has to be the same. And optionally, it might have the max speed itself that also has to be either missing or equal to that value. And this is the table, nice table of all, the, all such places. And obviously, uh, just having a table is not that great, but you can, okay, let's see, do I have it? Uh, okay, let's, let's try running it. I mean, I was trying to avoid it, but let's hope it works. It right now goes through my phone. It takes a few minutes, uh, or a few seconds, I hope. Um, essentially, it's gonna show a map of all such places and allows you to actually edit those, like inspect them individually and edit, make the change. There we go. So it found 16, 15, uh, 1500 such places, and we can zoom in to them and see it says like, oh, there's like a couple of them here on this road. We click on that and see it like says, Okay, on this way, the max speed is 40, uh, 45, the max speed forward is 45, and backwards is 45. Uh, very useful information. So we say, yes, make this change. In other words, remove these two and, and add, oh, sorry. No, this one, it says it wants to add the max speed 45 and remove these two. And we can look at all the other ones and they seem to be okay. Well, no, this one has a conditional. Okay, this one I will I'll, I'll actually skip because this one has a, but I'm just showing you that in if I saw that this one was a good edit to make, all you have to do is click the zoom in and click the save this change and that OSM edit would happen in real time, like 
right there to the OSM data. And you can do much more interesting stuff than that. For example, people put Wikidata ID, Wikidata tags on objects, and that's wonderful. Except that uh, we just had a hallway conversation about this. A street named uh, MLK Boulevard, for some reason, gets a Wikidata that says, pointing to Martin L Luther King, which really does not make any sense. It's not the street that corresponds to the person, it's the street named after that person. So there's a spe special tags for that if we actually want to keep that tag. Or for example, if there's a statue of a, of a person, you, that statue is not the person itself. So we need to uh, make the tag Wikidata, we need to switch it to subject, colon Wikidata equals to the whoever the statue is about. So that kind of validation you can do with this tool. Why? Because you can say, find me all the objects with Wikidata tags. Now go to Wikidata and check that these, uh, that this tag is not a subclass of a person because it's a subclass of a person. Well, in OSM, we do not have people. Although some people map cemeteries, in which case it's kind of a question like, do we want to record who, like, I mean, we, again, we're not, we're actually indicating tombstone. We're not indicating the person's body on OSM. So again, one of those things. So yeah, uh, this, this, is my, um, this is my talk. Uh, wanted to demo a few cool technologies. Enjoy. Thank <laughs> you.